have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Chang Ching is an interesting game because it's one of my very first purchases. When I first got into board gaming, I did go around and buy a lot of games that were on sale rather cheap. Heck, why not? Five, ten bucks. It'll boost my collection up. Maybe I'll, I'll try some things out. I really wasn't interested in quantity at that time, or quality at the time. I was more interested in quantity. I wanted to de devour a lot of games. And Chang Ching was a game that sat on my collection for a long time. The box is so oversized. I do like the artwork on the cover. I think it's really cool. But when I opened it up, it, it almost looked dated. Even when I got to the uh, gaming maybe seven, eight years ago, it still looked dated to me. It never drew me in to play it, and it just sat around for a long, long time. Well, we had some extra time. I finally got Ching Chang to the table, or Ching Ching to the table. And what did I find? I think I found an outdated game. I think I found a game that's okay. I mean, it plays really quick. This box has 60 minutes. I think we were done in 20. Now, if you had some AP, I could see it lasting a little bit longer. But all of our games were, were very, very short. It's really a guessing game of placement. You place something down. Somebody kind of moves things around. You're like, oh, well, that just screwed me over. Um, with that said... I think this is a really good filler game. I wish the box was smaller. The components are super, super nice. These big, clunky um, walls that are plastic that are very, very nice. Um, it's very abstract, but once you kind of understand where all the scoring is coming from, uh, I think people are going to have a lot of fun with it. I think this is maybe an overlooked game. I'm going to go ahead and purge it just because I don't especially like this sort of game. Um, if... If I didn't have so many games, I think this would have a better place in my collection. But I think for an older game, I think this is something that could be re-released and people may really like. I think there's some upgrading to the rules that might be needed. But it's a very solid, quick game. I would I would condense the box into something smaller, call it a filler, and put it back out on the market. So uh, some of the extra advanced scoring uh, tiles that you have, I think some of those are better than others. And, I, and that's a part of the game that I would look at because you want that variety, but I don't like some of them. I think they're redundant and, and, and perhaps not very interesting. But otherwise, this was actually a little game that surprised me more than anything. And while I will recommend Chang Ching, I think I'm going to go ahead and purchase. I just don't think it will get to the table that much because it's not a style of game that I enjoy. But Chang Ching, um, believe it or not, was a winner for me, and I recommend it to you. Here are the components for Ching Ching Ching. Very big box. And when I open it, first of all, the, the artwork on it is just beautiful. I really like this. I usually like things a little bit more colorful, but this is just 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 wonderful, especially for the age of this game. Um, you're gonna see right away, I'm just gonna pop this out. You're gonna see right away that there's a lot of plastic in here that really isn't needed. The insert is really nice. I backed everything up. You don't need to. I think it all fits in there very, very, very nicely. So you get a catalog from 2007. I looked through these games in here. I had never heard of any of them. So maybe I was just lucky to find Ching Ching. Ching. Uh, this doesn't come with it. It's just some rules I printed off the internet. Instead, this is the rule book. It comes in a few different languages, so it's not really that long. So you would just use these couple pages and that's it. So about six pages that you would use. Otherwise, it's just in different languages. So the board is modular. Well, let me show you this. So this is the scoring, which is the Great Wall of China. Very cool. And you just kind of move your scoring marker up. We've seen this before. It looks a lot like Carcassonne. It looks like a lot of other games. So the board is modular. You're going to use a number of this for how many players you are. And after you fill X amount up, you will add another one during the game. What you got here is where 
The bad guys are coming in at the end of the game. This is where you can play your action cards, how many victory points they are worth, and this is where you build your wall. Each each of the ones are different numbers and setups, but they all look kind of the same, and you can mix and match. So every time you play, it's different. Uh, these are the variant scoring that you can do. For some reason, all the cards used in the game are in this shape. They, I mean, have a, a nail file, but uh, these are just kind of into game scoring. They're randomized to be used and they're optional. These are the scoring you put on the game board to make it even more, not random, but just different every time you play. So these are kind of cool. And uh, let me show you these first. These are the guys that will randomly come out and attack at the end of the game. They all look the same on this side, but they're worth different points on the other side. So, well, theoretically. <laughs> And everybody's going to get a number of these really cool, albeit outdated, but really neat plastic. And that, that color is just to show what player it is. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. You're going to get a number of regular ones, and then you're going to get a double wall. You only get one of these. And then everybody will get a number of action tiles. Everybody has the same exact, exact action tiles, and they all work a little bit differently. But you'll be able to play these to the board to kind of mix things up, score differently, and screw people over. Um, and the, the, these dots at the top are just the initiative order, so the one who lays on a one will always be played before the three. So um, you can play these on the board. Everybody gets the same set. Uh, there is one more piece that you have in here which is the tower. Everybody gets one of these and they all work a little bit differently, but the plastic is super cool and it looks really neat when the wall is built when you're finished with it. So that's components. Very, very, very good components, especially for the age of this game. The rules for Chang Ching are fairly, fairly good, actually. The, the, Part about a game like this is digesting all of the rules, okay? You need to know how the scoring works before you play. You need to know how these, what these tiles could possibly do, the action tiles you have, and then the, the little scoring that you're going to have that is the variety for the game. So it, it just requires some digesting. I mean, if you played games, you played things much more difficult than Ching Ching. But uh, for light gamers, which I think with this game may push itself, there is a little bit of digestion that needs to go on. So... While it's a filler, I think you need to take it slow with somebody who may not be a gamer. Uh, but the rules are fairly clear, and I think as you add those things in, it, it, it's a really fun game. So changing the rules, I, I'm impressed with, but it does take a little digestion. Okay, I'm going to show you just a little bit about how this game is played. I just want to kind of give you a flow of it. Once again, I'm never trying to teach anybody how to play. So these guys go up here, and normally you have more than these going through the game. But I just kind of want to zero in on one of these boards because they all work the same. Theoretically, it's just a little bit different of how they look. Um, so when the game starts out, you will have a number of these placed down. Okay? I'm going to place them up. When the game starts, everybody can kind of see how they're going to score. So this one is is now worth five plus two is seven, three plus one is four, and five plus two is seven. So that kind of tells you right off the bat what everything is worth. So now you know what you're kind of battling with. On your turn, you can do a couple of things. I'm gonna go e over each of the actions. So. On your turn, you must perform one of these actions, okay? So what you would do is you can place two single wall blocks anywhere on the board you want. This could have been together, could be separate, it could be on different boards, whatever you want to do. Um, you could also play two of your action cards. Now, these are ores, so I'm just going to put two of these down, and you would put them face down anywhere you want. doesn't matter. Um... They just have to be different ones. Another thing you can do is place one action card down 
and one single wall. Very easy. It's very abstract. Or what you can do is you could place your double block. Now these just have to be in two spaces, but they can belong to two different provinces. So if you wanted to place it here, where it would be in between two of these. The good thing about doing that is that you're now allowed to look and see what's underneath tiles or where the block is going to be. So it's usually in your benefit, if possible, to put it in between two, that we can look at two of those raiders versus one. Uh, another thing you can do on your turn is you can place your one tower block, okay? That will also allow you to look at what this is, okay? Um, now, when you place a tower, one of the spaces next to the tower is always reserved for this player. So if I had not played this here, and let's just pretend that you're playing just this board, nobody else could go here. Only red could go here. If there's a block on the other side and it's open, then I could go there and then they could go there. But one single block by the tower has to be for the color of the tower. That's just a rule in the game. Okay, so after a province is completed, once it has all of the blocks, you will then score it, okay? Uh, you reveal the action cards and they will be done in initiative order, lowest number first. Um, and then you will score it based on the victory points, whoever has the majority here. So it's just like a little majority area control abstract game. Um, let me talk about these action cards just a little bit. And I'll go through what each of them do. Um, and, and this is one of the, the best parts about the game are, are these action tokens that you play down. So this one is fairly easy. This just cancels another action card. The other action card played will be eliminated. This will eliminate one wall block, number two. One wall block from the, it becomes broken and it's not counted for majority. And you can choose a Mongol province that borders with this one and that threat is removed from the game. And all these you can only use once. Number three will add two victory points or subtract two from the province. This will subtract two and add a wall. This will add two walls to the province. And number six allows you to swap two out. So these will, and these can only be played, like I said, once per game, each action card can be played. So you wanna be strategic about when you play those. At the end of the game, the Mongols will be flipped over. Anybody who has majority will score negative points. It's a very easy game to play. There's not a whole lot to do. It's really placing these walls to get majority. The action cards that kind of screw people over to score these victory points. But by the end, you don't wanna have majority because uh, and, and the action cards will help you do that after it scores to not get the negatives. And that's how it works. That is Ching Ching. Who should play this game? Who should buy this game? Anybody looking for a light filler that's not thwarted by the size of the box. Uh, I don't think it would ever take you an hour. If you took an hour, that's AP. That's not the game. Otherwise, I think it's a really fun little game that I hesitate to say it's for non-gamers or light gamers because there is a little bit of you have to download into your brain in order to play it. I don't think it's difficult though. And anybody who can play Monopoly could play this, okay? If they're used to playing Sorry or Candyland and that's where they're at then they, or life, they may not like this. But if you can play Monopoly, you can play this game uh, fairly easily. You have a lot of control in the game, although you don't have ultimate control. You can be screwed over a little bit. Um, and there is a complexity you can add to the game with the variety of scoring that you can do. You can totally do that out or put that in. Um, it's an abstract, though. Uh, they try to put a theme onto it. I think the theme works. I think it's fine. Why do they wait until the wall is built to come crashing in? I mean, it thematically kind of falls apart at times. But I think it's fine. I think for the people that want to play this game, if you're an abstract fan, you may lend yourself to this. Um, but I think the theme is fine. Um, this is one of those games that don't appeal to me. I don't have any friends that appeal to this sort of game. But if you think about it as a filler, 20 minutes or less, maybe 20, 20 25 minutes, 
I think all of a sudden your opinion of the game will change from a main event game to a lighter game. And you're like, well, for a lighter game, this is actually pretty substantial. So Chang Ching's going to fall in that regard to me. So if you take a look at it, you think, I could use a filler with some bite, and this looks interesting. Then seek out Chang Ching. It's an older one. I'm surprised it hasn't been republished, but maybe we'll see that in the future. Perch for me, though.